which seems to be have ugh, which seems to be had which seems to be has Everybody, it's your girl Jay and today I am here with my September wrap-up for 2023. I read a total of 12 books this month. Part 1 is already up on my channel so if you want to check out the first six books that I read for September then those are in that video. This is the final six books so without further ado let us get started. The first book I'm going to talk about is The Invisible Hour by Alice Hoffman. I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. This follows Ivy Jacobs who when she was a teenager fell pregnant and leaves her her very affluent family behind in order to join a community run by Joel Davis. Mia is born and Ivy marries Joel who is very controlling and enforces strict rules for his people. Those who don't follow his rules are swiftly punished. One day Mia breaks the rules and goes to a library where she takes out The Scarlet Letter by Nathaniel Hawthorne. She instantly falls in love with the story but she makes the mistake of leaving the book in the old barn where Joel finds it. Mia flees and is pursued by Joel and then she finds herself transported back to 1837 where she meets the author of her favorite book and it's kind of the story of that. I thought the concept of this book was very interesting. Cults are one of my buzzwords so I was very intrigued by this story. I think that the relationship between Mia and her mother Ivy was the best part of the book. I really like learning more about Ivy and her backstory. I really liked Mia as a main character. I love how she was still adventurous and tried to learn new things even while being scared of Joel. I will say that I think I liked the first part of the book before the time traveling much more than the second half of the book. I just, like I said, found the relationship between Ivy and Mia to be the best part of the book. I also just felt that the romance was a bit forced and I didn't really feel the connection between the two of them. There is a lot of discussion about the rights of women and the power of books in this which I think was really well done, so overall I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. The next book that I read is Together We Rot by Skyla Arndt and I give this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. After her mother disappears, Will Green is determined to figure out what happened to her. Will used to be best friends with Elwood Clark, but after she blames the very religious Clark family for the disappearance, her friendship with Elwood ends. Then one night Elwood shows up on her doorstep after breaking some of the family's very strict rules. They discover some of the Clark family's sinister plans and they decide to team up together to stop it before it's too late. Like I said about the last book, cult is one of my buzzwords so I was very intrigued by this. I will say the first thing that caught my eye was the cover. I think it is gorgeous. I did finish this book in one sitting. It is very fast paced but that being said at times the fast pace made me feel like I missed little details about the story. There also wasn't really any backstory about the town or the cult at all so I was kind of confused with what was going on a little bit. I do think that the writing style was gorgeous though. I really liked the dual point of view. I liked being inside both of the characters heads. I really loved Will as a main character. I love how determined she was to find out what happened to her mother. She is just so extremely loyal and when she cares about you she really cares about you and will do anything to protect you. She also might be slightly unhinged which I absolutely adored. I love an unhinged character. I also just think that Elwood was a sweet little prince. I really loved watching her relationship with Elwood grow as the story progressed. I personally am a sucker for the enemies to lovers trope so I ate this up. I will definitely be checking out more from this author whenever I get the chance but I enjoyed this. It was a 3.5 out of 5 stars for me. The next book I have is 40 Words for Love by Aisha Saheed and I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. This takes place in the magical town of Moonlight Bay which seems to be stripped of its magic since an unexpected tragedy occurred. Yas and Raf come from opposite sides of this town. Raf is a gulab which means he is a refugee. He works at the local diner but he dreams big of leaving town and going to school to become an architect. Yas is a local who uses shells from the water for their healing properties, but they've been very hard to come by since Moonlight Bay has begun struggling. Despite their differences, they fall for one another and it's their story. I thought that this was an okay book, nothing special in my opinion. I felt that there was a lot of world building lacking. I didn't really understand anything about Moonlight Bay or the magic. I thought that the leaf tattoos on the Gulab's wrists were really interesting, but again, 
and I wanted to know more, where they came from, what they meant. I will say that the imagery in this book was so well done. I want to visit Moonlight Bay and its Lavender Sea so badly. This involves the childhood friends to lovers trope which was very slow burn. I do think that the pacing was way too slow for my own personal taste. The novel also focuses on some very big topics like grief, loss, refugees, and the treatment of immigrants, which I think was really well done, so I ended up giving it a 3 out of 5 stars. It just wasn't my cup of tea, but somebody else might really love it. Next I have Going by Coastal by Diana Aldler, and I give this a 4 out of 5 stars. So this follows Natalia, who must decide between two very different options. She can either move to LA to reconnect with her mother while working as an intern at their company, or she can stay in New York City and live with her father, where her secret crush also lives. Finding it hard to decide, we get to witness both of these summers play out in alternating timelines, and it's kind of that story. I love this cover. I love the colors chosen. I think it is so well done for the story that is being told. This is told in dual timelines, like I said. You get alternating chapters of each summer, which I thought was such a fun concept. We basically get to follow Natalia in both timelines, in both locations during the summer. I loved both of the timelines, honestly. I think that they were both really fun, and they both had very likable love interests. They're so different from each other, personality-wise, but I never really felt like I was rooting for one over the other. I was honestly happy with Natalia ending up with both of them. I kind of wanted them to, like, become a thing with all three of them, because, like, that would have been cool. But it, it doesn't happen, so spoiler. But I really liked both of them. I honestly really liked the conclusion in both timelines. I think that they were really well done. I love how much Natalia grew in both of them and got to figure out, you know, what she wanted for her future and her life. The bisexuality rep was really well done. And from what I've read from reviews, people also think that the Jewish rep was really well done as well. I personally don't really know too much about the Jewish culture, so I loved learning little things about it as I was reading. I also really liked the side characters in both of the timelines as well. I think that they were all very flushed out. They all had unique personalities, which I really liked learning more about. The one thing I will say about this book, though, is that there is no drama, and I just wanted, like, the tiniest little bit of drama because I felt like Natalia's life was way too easy and everything was resolved so quickly in both timelines. I just wanted a little bit of angst, you know? But I had a really fun time reading this story and I give it a 4 out of 5 stars. Next up I have The Forest Grimm by Catherine Purdy. I end up giving this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. When the villagers of Hollows Grimm become of age at 16, the Book of Fortunes grants them one wish. Clara never got her wish because the year prior, a villager used their wish to commit murder, which caused a curse to be unleashed and the book as well as many villagers to go missing. Now, the villagers turn to Clara's psychic grand mare for guidance. Clara and her best friend Axel have both lost someone very close to them to the forest grim. Clara is determined to rescue her mother from the forest and break the curse, but the fortune that her grandmare keeps seeing for her shows an untimely death. Determined to change her fate, she and Axel head off to find the lost ones, and it's that story. So this book is definitely geared more towards the younger side of YA, but I really loved the inclusion of the grim fairy tales in this. I think that it was so fun and unique the way that this author twisted those fairy tales to be included, and it was definitely my favorite part of this story. I loved the forest setting and how alive it felt. I loved all the villagers that these three met along the way and how creepy they were. I do think that it started dragging after a while and I do wish that some things were cut out that didn't really feel all that necessary, but I was clearly invested enough to keep reading the story because I did want to figure out what was happening. I do think that the story became rather repetitive after a while though and I was able to call a lot of the major plot twists that were thrown our way. I also was not the biggest fan of the romance. I think I would have enjoyed it more if they had stayed platonic and just childhood best friends. This is a duology and I am intrigued to see where the story progresses because we are left on a pretty big cliffhanger, but I ended up giving it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. And then the final book that I read, I gave a 5 out of 5 stars. This was definitely my favorite of this month. 
It is Violet Made of Thorns by Gina Chen. Like I said, five out of five stars, so freaking good. This follows Violet, who after saving the royal prince Cyrus when they were children, is appointed the royal seer. She is tasked with reading the threads of fate for the past and the future, but when she sees Cyrus's untimely death, the king asks her to lie about what she's seen. She tells of a bride that will become known when Cyrus returns from a long journey, but when Cyrus comes back with no bride on his arm, whispers start circulating about the curse that follows him. I had so much fun reading this book. I think it's probably one of the best enemies to lovers trope that I have read. We love a good hate kiss on this channel and the chemistry and sexual tension between these two was chef's kiss so freaking good. I loved the banter between these two. They bickered so much and I ate it up every time. I loved how much they distrusted each other and the betrayals in this were just coming left, right, and center and I ate it up every time. I could not get enough of these two. Violet may be one of my new favorite characters. She is so sarcastic and witty and so unabashedly herself. I just love how she told her messy little lies to the court and how she shaped everything to what she wanted and nobody could tell her that she was wrong. She was just so conniving and impulsive and I am obsessed with her. Also big fan of Camilla, the prince's twin sister. She is a chaotic lesbian and I loved every second she was on page. I honestly want a spin-off story of her. I love how there's tidbits of multiple fairy tales in this. We get parts of Sleeping Beauty, Beauty and the Beast, Cinderella. There's also a lot of elements with the fae and the dark magic and monsters that I really enjoyed. I cannot wait for the second book in this duology. I need it in my hands right now. Five out of five stars. If you haven't read this yet, definitely check it out. It's worth it. I had so much fun reading it and I have a new favorite character. Actually, two favorite characters, Violet and Camilla. Oh, what if they got together? power couple to the max. All right, everybody, those were the last six books that I read for the month of September 2023. If you are interested in the first six that I read, check out the first part of the wrap up. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!